Call to order, Town of North Brantford, uh, special town council meeting, Tuesday, July 18th, at, uh, 2023 at 7.05 p.m. We'll start with the flag, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here this evening. Okay. Uh, let's start with roll call, please. Councilor Mace? Here. Oh. Councilor Abelson? Here. Councilor Gold? Here. Councilor Palladino? Here. Councilor Angeloni? Here. Councilor Diamond? Here. Councilor Felicio? Here. Deputy Mayor Zampano? Here. And Mayor McMillan? Present. Okay. Okay, on to something we're excited about, the community events and presentations section here, where we're going to present um, to some former retirees here in North Frankfurt. Uh, so I'm going to read a little, uh, little something we put together here, and then we're going to uh, present some plaques, and we're going to do a picture as well. Uh, so <clears throat> we have some folks here, and we, we know amongst the group here, we wanted to make sure that uh, you know we, there's some folks that were part of our organization or our organization, our, our town for a long time, the fabric, the build of our town. Um, and you know, over time, they possibly have left, and it was a, a kind of a busy time period, so we wanted to make sure that we're always recognizing those that are bringing a great deal of, uh, of their energy and their life into the town and giving back to the town. Um, so we're going to talk about some folks that are here today. Uh, we'll start talking with, about Helen Glasson, Atwater Librarian. Uh, her service was February 1st, 1988, February 2nd, 2018, 30 years as North Bramford, which is, is quite commendable. Thank you, Helen. Uh, Diane Ramsey, who oh, unfortunately is not with us this evening, uh, but dispatcher, October 20th, 1992 to February 2nd, 2020, uh, 22, I'm sorry, 2020, 28 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Cadelli, Chief of Police, September 30th, 1970 to June 30th, 2018, 48 years. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and Michelle Knockwood, purchasing agent, uh, March 20th, 2006 to April 5th, 2022, 16 years in town North Brantford. Uh, the first four we have plaques for today due to the fact that they're going to be able to make this meeting. So I will read through the other folks, though. Probably appropriate to do so now. Um, and then uh, we'll do a little, uh, little, little show and get you those plaques. Um, so Debbie, is it Varello? Uh, Edward Smith Librarian, August 29th, 1988, December 3rd, 2022, 34 years. Thank you, Debbie. Ron Ferrucci, Police Officer, August 13th, 2001, December 16th, 2021, 20 years. Thank you, Ron. Kurt Weiss, Town Engineer, May 6th, 1987, to June 30th, 2021, 34 years. Thank you, Kurt, uh, for all that you've provided to this town. Bob Hall, Library Director, September 1st, 1976, December 1st, 2017, 41 years. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hall. Uh, Bob Grimm, Public Works, November 28th, 1988 to June 4th, 2019, 31 years. And Barbara Ferrucci, Tax Collector, September 7th, 1990 to April 5th, 2019, 29 years. Court Sperry, Police Lieutenant, July 5th, 1994 to June 27th, 2020, 26 years. And Dave Muldoon, Police Officer, July 28th, 1995 to October 3rd, 2020, uh, and that's 25 years. So there's a, a lot of really great tenure, and, and you know, I think uh, the council would like to extend our absolute appreciation for the amount of effort that you've brought to this town. Um, you know, obviously, this is your career, but being part of this fabric of this community, living within this community, um, it takes a lot to uh, to stay within a, a career that long and stay within a town for that long. Uh, so it's Really commendable and we appreciate all the efforts that you put into this town uh, so that said I'd like to ask should we do um, the three together and then we'll do some individual pictures or yeah why, like we, why don't we do them individually okay. and then we can do a group photo with them after all right let's start with Miss Helen Glasson please okay Miss Glasson let's go over here Yeah. 
I just stayed right behind me. Yeah, so. Appreciate you folks coming out tonight. Uh, again, thank you for your service to the town of North Bradford. Okay, so we're going to move on into our next part of our meeting here, which is the minutes of previous meeting, which is June 20, 2023, town council meeting. I will accept a motion to accept the minutes. Um, so moved with the following corrections. There's a number of them. So the first one is... Um, under section uh, 4E, committee reports, um, planning and zoning, it's 4E, planning and zoning committee. Um, it says Councilor Angeloni, but I'm not on planning and zoning. I think it was Deputy Mayor yeah. Zampiano. Yeah. That should be indicated there was no meeting. Then number F, finance committee. Um, I'm not sure what the first sentence means because it says that there's language to be changed regarding the safety commission for finance, and I have no idea what the safety commission is. I don't know that I said that, so I'm not exactly sure what that should read. That should probably be the public safety committee. committee. Down to G, which would be you. Right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I'm... Not exactly sure what that. You might have to go back to the tape. Then under 8A, um, it's just the motion is mentioned um, for discussion, creation of an 1831 committee. It's just listed twice there. Everything is listed twice as to, um, well, actually, the motion that's listed there is not part of the discussion of the creation of the 1831. It was a motion to amend the agenda. So the first <coughs> section should just be eliminated because then the motion is stated correctly underneath that. And then eight, um, now I think it's just, wait one second. Oh. 9B, 
on page six of the minutes. It says Mayor McMillis, and that should be Mayor <laughs> McMillan. Thank you. Um, and then under 8C on page seven, at the top of the page, it says their designer and it should be designee. That's all corrections that I have. Okay. All right. So we have a motion with the amendments from Councilor. Uh, do we have a second from second. Councilor? Second. second. From Deputy Mayor Zampano. Um, any discussion? I'm giving up. I can't. I can't move it. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? All right. Thank you. We'll move on. Um, and if you need to have anything back otherwise we can get it after as well so you can there's a number of changes there. i understand that like this okay um on to the water pollution control authority agenda item four can uh, correspond to citizen statements and petitions do we have any seeing none we'll move on to item five unfinished business item a discussion and action uh 224 fox and road map 22 lot one Request to connect mobile homes and recreational vehicle park sites and launch facilities to sanitary sewers in Totucket Road. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, we're, uh, we're just bringing up uh, Victor Benny, our town engineer, okay. who's remote. Understood. Good, good evening. Yes, I'm here. I apologize for not being able to attend tonight, but uh, I, can't do it. I guess tonight is just an update. Can, can everyone hear me okay? We can hear you. Thank you, Victor. Great, great. So if I could, I'll just update everybody at the last meeting on June 6th. We did have some questions from the WPCA and requesting more information pertaining to available capacity in the system and regarding how much flow we actually send to Greater New Haven mm -hmm. WPCA already. I corresponded with Greater New Haven WPCA and verified that there is capacity built into the system with uh, the calculations that we provided them and, and a little bit of a, a revision to the to the calculations that we provided there's plenty of capacity available in the system and uh one of the other questions was regarding how the special connection fee might be handled uh whether it be uh from a lump sum to a partial to a per unit basis i think based on the fact that we have differing uh types of connections at any one point in time being, you know, it could be two RV units and one mobile home unit or, you know, one unit at a time. I think it's best to to go forward with a, a special uh, connection fee on a per unit basis based on, you know, the number of units they're proposing to connect at that time. But I certainly would leave that up to your discretion on that decision. And uh, I think that was about it unless there's any further uh questions or thoughts that might have come up from the, any members of the wpca I, I believe we should have don Capelli, the, the property owner there tonight and in attendance and jim freddy from crispola engineering jim's not here but don is present press down hold it okay i'm good all right um so is there any discussion from the board as to your thoughts on this as presented? So I just have a question for Don. I wasn't at the June 6th, but I read all the minutes and everything. So you would pref you didn't want to pay the whole thing up front. You, this is a phase in over a number of years, correct? Probably a five year phase in. So, so we would like to pay the uh, fees at time of permit issuance. Which is what the town engineer is recommending also. Correct. So, okay. And then, okay. Any other questions? So I would like to move the suggested motion that is in our packet. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's a whole page, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to move the motion as stated. Okay. Motion moved as stated. Uh, we have a second. Second. Second by Deputy Mayor Zampano. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Passes. Thank you very much, Victor. Thanks for being on today. I know it, uh, you're kind of stuck, so we appreciate you coming on the, getting on the horn with us here. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Thanks, Victor. Mr. Kelly, thank you as well for being here this evening. Thank you. Man. Appreciate you for answering questions. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, item item six, new business. There's none. Uh, we move on to the regular town council meeting. Uh, reports and committees, boards and commissions. Item A, Economic Development Commission. Um, I was only able to attend, but they did have a meeting on the uh, 10th. I didn't get the minutes yet, so I could present those to the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right. Item B, Parks and Recreation. Um, Park and Recreation will be meeting next week. Um, and the big thing with uh, right now is everyone knows the Poco Fest is in... Um, Swing. Two, two and a half weeks um, so we are in the final stages of having it all come together and finalizing things and of course it wouldn't be a meeting if I did not ask for volunteers <laughs> uh, so, just forms <laughs> so um, we you can go to the website uh, there is a form there for volunteers um, I've already had two council members contact me and ask if they would like to, uh, when they need, when we need help and where they could. So I have two volunteers already. So I thank you very much um, for that. Anyone else who would like to, um, I am open and would gladly take the help. Um, so, so um, we are um, still looking for volunteers. Um, this year it's a three-day event, not a four-day like last year, um, and we have a lot of new and exciting things um, happening this year. So we hope that the weather is not as hot as last year, um, and we hope that all of this rain we've been get, getting right now is done with, now. and uh, we can just move forward. Do you want to give a couple highlights of some of the new things, seeing that we're not going to be in meeting until after? Um, well, actually, our next meeting oh, is just the before second. the Poco right. Fest, just but okay, we, do, we do have, um, so new this right. year is the Beer and Wine Garden. It's yeah. actually, it's not a tasting, it's an actual Beer and Wine Garden, which will be set up next to the stage. We've moved the stage up to the top field, um, so it'll be next to the Potato and Corn uh, booth, and the stage is there, and the Beer and Wine Garden will be next to that. We also have um, axe throwing, which is a gentleman from town who runs this operation. And we have axe throwing. And we will have helicopter rides this year also. Um, so they are in the um, youth football field. That will all be roped off. It actually will take you up. You'll go over Lake Gillard, Totucket Mountain, go over the Auger property. You will go to downtown New Haven, over the Thimble Islands, and come back. Town, um, I think our town attorney is interested in that. I'm <laughs> get him on the helicopter. I can see this so excitement that, that in his eyes. The helicopter rides will only be during the daytime hours on Saturday Good. and Sunday. I was hoping so. for the hatchet catching. Yeah. The hatchet, yeah. Oh, your hatchet, hatchet catching. catching. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can get that too, <laughs> depending on how the helicopter ride goes. Yeah. I have a question. Oh, yes, sir. Are, are these those helicopters that they fold up and put on the back of a truck? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. 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 Fold down the blades and everything else, and then put them on the back of a truck like an amusement ride and take them all. I like the little helicopters that go in a circle and you control the up down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more my <laughs> stuff. So they will, they, they will not be huh? refueling here on site. They will be going to Tweed to refuel. Oh, good. No jet fuel, and no, that's good to know. I'm we, not sure. Are they two seaters? Yeah, yeah, there was a room with two seaters. So okay. Pilot and then the two, two people sit. So nice. We do have an experienced aviator in the house today. Uh, I would wonder if he would be uh, if he would be someone that would get in one of those helicopters. Mr. Hall, would you would you get in one of those helicopters? Probably would. Okay, I know you would. <laughs> okay. Just for clarification, Braver the, man, the hatchet throwing is not associated with the helicopters, right? No. No, you no it's associated with the beer and wine. No. Yeah. I just want to know if I got to get an extra ambulance. Not yeah. recommended to throw them from the helicopter. Uh, the town attorney told us not. We were going to try to do that. but. And we also are having, uh, we've expanded our kids section, yes. and we also have um, pig racing this year. So we, 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 pigs will be there 
all weekend long running several shows. Um, and so we are looking forward to that. Um, we have been told that they're pigs, they're piglets, actually. Oh, piglets. Um, and they're very clean. They get baths during the day, throughout the day. I'm not bringing and any labor laws, being that they're piglets, right? Nope. Okay. And, you know, if they race, they race. Um, they're not trained for racing. You know, it's not, no violations with PETA, and she does not kill any of them nice. later on for food. So. Will you be running a sports <laughs> book on this at all? Or? So. Yeah, Okay, so, so, we have a so lot of no new baking kebabs. Okay, good. This year. All right. Um, all right, well, that's good. Thank you for apprising us to these new things we have going on. I think it's going to be a, another great year. Let's hope the weather holds out if we don't get these. And a lot of great random. bands. We have uh, Hazard County is Friday night. <clears throat> yeah. uh, Juice Box is Saturday night. Those are the two um, primetime bands. And then we have um, opening acts for them prior to that. Oh, so wow. we have... Um, different genres of music, yeah. so I think it should be... And not to forget, the most extravagant fireworks show in all of Connecticut. Uh, on Saturday night, yeah, Saturday 9.30. Yes. There it is. Okay. Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind me asking, Please. Rose uh, got asked a question. Has the our lawyer looked over the insurance policy of the helicopter uh, company thoroughly? They, they, they will be. He does his inspection. He <clears throat> has to go for his FAA inspection like just prior, like at the end of this month. So his insurance does not get renewed until he passes that inspection. So we will get his updated insurance policy at that time. But all of the insurance requirements for all of our vendors have been going through our purchasing person, Mike Fumiati, um, and there are spe very specific and it's more than the mm. regular vendors. That's good to also. know. Is this good. his first go-ahead? No, no, he does, not. He does the, <laughs> I, I, think say, first I think swing. it's the Berlin Fair. Yeah. I think he does the Berlin good Fair. Good to know. Um, okay. And so. The only so, way to really look this over is put a town attorney and Michael Fumiati in the helicopter together. <laughs> <laughs> right? I say, that's Once the right way to do it. As long as it doesn't go up in the air, I'm good with that. Oh, no, no, <laughs> we're going. How much yeah. is the right? It's $40 oh, that's not bad. per person, and the festival gets $5. That's great. So there's certain things that we've brought in this year that don't cost us anything. We actually are, we get proceeds from it based that's great. on the number of people that participate. I will say this years ago at the Big E when I did it, it was a glass helicopter with no doors. So I don't know if these are the same thing, if they've updated I, them over the past 30 years or not. There's some I'm not pictures sure of them online. I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> so, okay. I hate yes. ladders. It's so, take so a ride we, in a fishbowl. So <laughs> due to construction issues, we've had to change the layout a little bit. So this year, just to put it out there, so the shuttle bus service is actually going to be dropping off and picking up over at the Auger House. And so we're going to have actually two entrances to the festival, one over in that section coming in from that side, and then the people that park on site will come in the other way. By the field. By the field. Gotcha. Coming okay. in through there. Great. The car show has been moved from Friday night to Sunday morning. Sunday morning, okay. Will be the car show oh. and the Floyd's 5K race, which is normally on Sunday, that has been moved to Saturday morning. Oh. Um, and so we highly encourage people to use the shuttle buses. Um, we have lost a number of spaces just due to construction and dirt piles and yes. everything else. So. Um, and the road by Public Works, the new road, will not be open at all for any for anyone. Or foot will, traffic? Will you open for foot traffic? Yes. Okay, we, we will only use it if we use the softball field for Great. parking. Great. But otherwise, so we've had to make a lot of changes due to all of the construction of that's going on. But we're just rolling with it. Very good. Exciting times in North Brantford. Okay. Thank you very much for that uh, that update. Appreciate it. All right, on to police commission. Uh, can you no can meeting. you top that? <laughs> no meeting. <laughs> no meeting. Okay, we'll let you go on that. One. I have a lot to say about communications, though. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad you got something. All right, <laughs> all right. I mean, it's on to Ron. Fire commission, sir. Same thing. No meeting. This okay. Morning. All right, on to planning and zoning commission. Deputy Mayor. Planning and zoning met Thursday. Um, there's a new vet opening up in uh, North Brantford on 139, where the Marcus Law Firm was. It used to be the old church rectory years ago, St. Augustine's Rectory. 
in that in that building. Um, and uh, Tilcon renewed their uh, their special permit to. Uh, store strip soil from their blasting areas. They do it somewhere behind uh, behind Grant Drive, like, but in the wood you can't see it. It's in I the heard. woods. I live there. But there. it's it's yeah. it's not it's not a um, an industrial or a commercial zone, so they have to keep renewing their their special permits. So. They move it at night to hear the beeping. Yeah. And then uh, they cleaned up their bylaws. It looked like just nothing uh, nothing uh, particular. It just looked like. You know, misspellings a lot of things and mm -hmm. you know and then uh, then they also talked a lot about the uh, multifamily housing district um, and they're putting they put together a draft that they're working on good we'll represent. Yeah. great okay on to the thank you on to the finance subcommittee item F um, finance subcommittee uh, we had a special meeting last week um, and it's later on our agenda it's in regards uh, we'll um, be discussing it because it deals with s security um, issues for the new police station, but it has to do with a no bid um, consideration for one of the vendors. Okay, thank you. All right, on to G Public Safety Communications Subcommittee. Okay, the committee met on June 28th. Uh, Ray Bergotti, who represents Homeland Security, has informed the committee that there's still an issue obtaining the subordination agreement with MT Bank. And he's still working with it. Is that correct, attorney? That's my understanding. We've heard yeah, nothing. Okay, so that's still a problem. Their, the ball's been uh, in their court for some time. Now. He also informed the committee there's an issue in obtaining. Now, don't ask me a lot of questions about this. He can't, he right now can't get what's called an 800 amp circuit breaker, which is needed for the tower until the middle of September. In the meantime, he's thinking about putting in a 400, two, maybe a 400, two 400 temporarily. There was a lot of discussion at the committee about whether they want to do that. So I'm not sure what the up update is on that. And this uh, is for the Telcon Tower or the, the this, uh, this is for Homeland, the one over here. Over yeah. here in Telcon. Yeah. Okay. No, um, not Telcon. Oh, no. It's the one here. One in Northford. Northford oh, Center, yeah. not yeah. the Telcon. Not the one Tilcon. over there, the directly at the other right tower. Over there. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. So the North for the, the North for Village Tower. So okay. again, that's an issue, this problem with this amp that he can't get until the 26th of September. But he's thinking of putting in a 400 one temporarily at no cost to us. Um, he also needs information, additional information from the town in order to get a notice to proceed. I don't know how much he's received, a certificate of insurance, an antenna mount analysis, and a commercial lease agreement. I don't know if he's received any of those from the town. Um, Paul Zito, who is our consultant, has been working with the town. In terms of the Chilcon Tower, that's the one over there, mm -hmm. um, they're waiting for a notice to proceed and a certificate of insurance from the town. And they, however, have agreed to dig the trenches for the electrical service to the North Brantford radio cabinet. And Motorola is going to be installing in the fire department apparatus all of the car radios by the end of September. Good. So that's not too bad, right? No, that's good. Thank you. I know you said not to ask questions, but... Um, <laughs> If we don't put in the double 400 amperage, um, I would have to right defer to. Would it not? Would it not work? Deputy Chief. You need, you need 800 amp service there. So can but you put two boards in the meantime, or are you, you wait around. Or it's off service. It's it's out of service. Okay. Okay. And that would delay. If you don't know, this is not a worry. But that would delay other carriers to join that. Nobody's going on it, so they need the, the 800 to run any, anything on that tower. Okay, but they could go on it technically if we put the two four. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Okay. How about the, um, the thank you certificates of Those insurance? insurance? Those have to come from the town. Those are the town's insurance. Right. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I mean, who... That's usually just a phone call. Mike, can you well, take a look at that and see? They've. They're saying that they've requested a number of things from us, but we have not received requests for those things. Okay. So, all right, well, we'll have to look into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it hasn't been received by the town hall, it's hard for us to get it to Supposedly, that. Supposedly, Paul Zito, I don't know who he's, who he's talking with. It, Ray said that his company, that Homeland, submitted requests for a number of items, and they have not been received by our building department. So, so and I asked, I, I asked him, and I got no answer back as to where those requests were went. were made, to whom, when, dates. I got nothing. Okay. So. so, who chairs that committee? Was my assessment? No. Who chairs it? Who chairs that committee? 
the communication? communications. What about it? Who's, Who's the chairman? The chair? Dave. It's your Dave. Dave? Okay. Can we reach out to Dave and see if Dave can make a phone call to Ray or, and or Mr. Zito and see if we can coordinate that Supposedly, to get it going? So he hasn't been in touch, is what you're saying? Paul Zito? Not, not in a couple weeks. You would think. Well, that's a matter, Mike. So wouldn't someone from the town hall, I don't know whether it would be you or the building department or the engineer, follow up and find out? The ball, the ball is in their court. They need to resolve their issues. Okay. And yeah. a lot of what we need to do is predicated on them accomplishing what they need to do first. Okay. So yeah. even if they had submitted some of the requests for what they're looking for, we can't do it until they're done. Which is why I figured the, the chairman may be a viable person to coordinate between those two entities. Well, I also think Chief Halloran's had a lot of discussion with Paul Zito. He also should be able to help. Okay. There's a meeting Thursday on the Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Debbie Chu. Okay. Uh, any other questions about that? Okay. All right, we're going to move on. Thank you very much. On to the CIWWA. Okay, the Inland Wetlands met on Jan June 28th. They approved the application for construction on Forest Road of a freestanding garage slash storage building with office and a new parking area within the 200 feet of the Farm River. <clears throat> but they have certain conditions, but they did finally approve that. Okay, thank you very much. All right. All right, on to item eight, town manager report A, general updates. Michael. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the town council. Um, we just talked about the Northford Tower, um, also relative to the Tilcon Tower, since we're talking about the two towers. Um, just a quick update, the, there's delays, as you know, getting off the ground there too. Um, so we've got an agreement going with Goose Town, which is the provider for the public safety radios to continue uh, at the same price we've been paying there for uh, another four months. The town attorney worked out a deal with them so we can continue until uh, we've got them squared away. Uh, Poco Festival, I don't want to dare try to top what uh, <laughs> Councilor Angeloni had there. We've all heard about that. And um, I know that the, uh, the Park and Rec, and Rec team, the Poco coordinators um, and volunteers have been hard at work putting together a first-rate event, so I know we're all looking forward to Ask for that. volunteers. And if you would like to volunteer, <laughs> see Councillor Angela. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, Public Works has uh, commenced with their phase one paving program, which is a cold in place recycling pavement process. To Sierra Road, Lower Beach Road, partial Upper Beach Road, uh, partial Sea Hill Road, and Greystone. Um, phase two will be in the coming weeks with a coat of asphalt and curbing, which will be followed up with backfilling curbing, planting grass, and replacing signage as needed. After some rough starts, our Munis payroll functionality is up and running, and I want to publicly acknowledge the work of our finance department in this process. Uh, there have been numerous challenges in getting us up to that point, and it could not have been done without the leadership of Anthony Esposito and his team, particularly Anita Mancini and Terry Nuzzo. We put in a lot of extra hours and effort to make this happen, so our thanks goes to them tonight. Uh, on July, July 8th and 9th, the Northford Pickleball Tournament was held at our new pickleball facility at Stanley T. Williams. The event had over 200 registrants, including nationally rated competitors. Ooh. And uh, the event was held as a fundraiser to support additional amenities at Northford's excellent new facility. Uh, pickleball tournament director Toby Newbig presented a $10,000 check from tournament proceeds to Councilor Rose Angeloni and I at a brief ceremony at the start of the event. And uh, our thanks go to Toby and her organization, and we look forward to working on and improving what we have at that location. That's fantastic. And, and this tournament was only for doubles. I believe she's running a singles tournament in September. Wow. So this, it was... Get your paddles out, huh? There was someone from Ontario that came and <laughs> yeah. competed. It's always and packed there, yeah. every day. Yeah. 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 Trucks and night. Night. Honestly, yeah. even, in, yeah. even in adverse conditions, I drive yeah. by there and I see people out there <laughs> still playing. So yeah. it's uh, it's pretty popular. Tennis courts are empty, though. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the courts from the helicopter riding. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you'll know that firsthand. Absolutely. Don't worry, Brian. We're going to get you up there. So the winner got $10,000? No, no, no. No, no, we no. got $10,000. We were the winner. We got $10,000 from them. They, we won the money. Yeah. They donated the to money to yep. Parks and Recs so that they can add some amenities like benches and nice. places to put your Smoke backpacks and paddles mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yes, Toby did an excellent job in Fantastic. organizing this. Wow. I was there tonight, and boy, that place is packed. That's yeah. Good. It's a place to be. 
Why don't we get some benches over there? Bought like some that's, that's, viewing benches. That's what yeah. this money's for. That sounds great. So it's the, the pickleball, it attracts people from all over Connecticut, not just on the tournament. Though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> like to are we, are we watch the only pickleball. town that has uh, pickleball? No, a, a lot of towns have it, but we have the most and they're lit. Yeah. So yeah. that's. We have a, we have a 10. Ten courts. Yeah. Right. Did they call them courts? I just want to make sure yes. I'm using the right yeah. terminology. Yeah. You never yes. know, right? Um, but yeah, that's the most I think that any Connecticut to community issue us has. a pickleball for dummies book. Yeah. <laughs> make sure we learn about it. So that's what's going to put us on the map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Maybe it is. I guess. Huh? Great. Uh, All right. So, Thanks so for money. Sure. The uh, the town of North Brantford and our Economic Development Commission are partnering with the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce for a business under the Big Tent Reimagined event. The business to business community engagement event will take place Thursday, August 3rd, from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. at Guilford Savings Bank on Middletown Avenue uh, in Northford. The featured speakers will include, include Rob Hodling, the Deputy Commissioner of Connecticut DECD, and Charlie Rosa Bianca of Rosa Bianca Vineyards. On Wednesday, July 12th, from 10 to 12, our staff in the tax collector and tax assessor's office paid a visit to Stanley T. Williams to assist seniors in paying their taxes and answer any questions they had and made them aware of programs that are available in town for senior residents. The Hazardous Waste and Recycling Committee conducted a successful electronics collection on July 8th, collecting a large quantity of unwanted TVs, media devices, monitors, printers, etc., at the Public Works facility on Forest Drive from 9 to noon. They also collected mattresses and empty propane tanks for a small size-based fee. Thanks to this committee, its volunteers, and our public, our public works support team for making the event a success. And there was only one person who drove the wrong way uh, through their pro procession. And I don't want to name who it was, but he was driving a black SUV and he wears glasses and is sitting in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, also, July 5th, kids uh, attending the North Brantford Park and Rec Summer Camp had a special treat when uh, Corporal Pacelli and Corporal Casenza with his canine partner Chance paid a visit. Uh, Chance did demonstrations inside, and the kids were able to view SWAT equipment outside. Uh, and congratulations to town clerk Lisa Valenti on her successful application for a $6,000 state historical grant from the Connecticut State Library for indexing and scanning land records. Our current online database goes back to September 1st, 1977. The goal is to continue adding land records from 77 backwards and complete as many volumes as the 240 hours from the $6,000 grant will allow. The project will also be redacting social security numbers from viewable documents online. Um, last but not least, we recently conducted our ratings call with S&P Global and also conducted our bond sales. And I want to bring our finance director, Anthony Esposito, up to give you a quick update on both of those items. A brief memo for you guys. Copy of the S&P rating that Mike just alluded to. And the last two pages are the results of our uh, bond and note sale. Thank you. Unfortunately, we are, you know, subject to the the market and the rates that we got this go around. Obviously, we're significantly different than the population. Thank you. The rates that we got uh, in prior. Uh, but the, the first few pages, again, are the S&P rating. And uh, they affirmed our rating of AA+, plus, which is a positive. Our outlook remains stable, which is also a positive. You may recall a few years back when the state was having financial woes, uh, most of the towns had a negative outlook at times them. So we're happy with that. Uh, it talks about some key factors, the you know, grand list growth, conservative management, steady financial profile, manageable debt. All in all, pretty pretty favorable uh, update on the town's finances. And in the last two pages, uh, a little bit of anomaly this year. If you look at the fact that we have an inverted yield curve, and the twenty-four million eight hundred five thousand dollars of one-year bond anticipation notes, we got a rate. The lowest rate was three point five three and change. If you go to the page immediately after that. The twenty-year bonds, the lowest rate was three point three nine. So typically, the short-term rates historically, when the yield curve is functioning normally, the short-term rates are lower than the long-term rates. There's more uncertainty the farther you go out. Mm -hmm. uh, in this period, we're in economic times now. We have an inverted yield curve, and so the short-term rates, the one-year rate, is actually higher 
in the 20 year rate. Uh, this is a function of the market. We obviously have no control over that. Uh, but since we have control over the ratings and such and, and the financial management, uh, we've got a standard report card from the Post of Standard and Poor's. Again, this process starts off with the official statement that we go through and update with the help of our financial advisor. It talks about the financial strengths and weaknesses of the town. It shows some trending, talks about demographics, talks about the budget, talks about the management, things like that. And then that gets put out to all the, the bidders. And based on what they see, they like or don't like, they submit their bids on the financial strength of the town. So it was favorable. Uh, again, 14 bids came in for the bonds, which is the greatest number that both our financial advisor and bond council had seen in recent sales, which talks about the desirability of our paper, the town's paper, on the market. Mm -hmm. The more people that bid on it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good good sign. Any questions about the process? Or no, this is good. Thanks. Thank you, sir. That concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you very much. Anthony, thank you for going through that with us. That's good to see. You've been in, you've had a very interesting time period with the first field. Okay, on to uh, item B, Permanent Project Building Committee. Uh, for Stanley T. Williams Community Center, the roof has been completed and a walkthrough conducted on July 6th. Punch list items are being reviewed and completed now. Uh, the police Department and EOC site work is continuing there. The water tank has been installed and the slab poured. Steel is expected the week of July 24th. North Brantford High School, the punch list work is continuing and the summer punch list items needed to be completed before school opens has been established. The standing portion of the old school has been taken down and the de demolition associated with phase two is in process. Uh, and North Brantford Intermediate School, the contract was awarded to Barrett Incorporated, as you know. Uh, they are now on site. The exterior is being pressure washed. The MB sign is going to be removed before school starts and stored at the New Haven Sign Store for the future. That concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Okay. Item nine, citizen statements and petitions to correspondence. Do we have any? Please state your name and address, sir. Okay, good Thank to see you. you. I got a big mouth, but I guess I'm supposed to use this. Cliff Potter, Northford, Connecticut. Um, once again, I want to thank you all. My tax bill was affordable, and I, I can't take any credit. Well, you can. You guys run a tight ship. You put many volunteer hours that we can't afford if we had to pay you, but you do a good job. So I, I really do appreciate every one of you on the town council. Thank you. On that note, you're going to look at spending money on a dog pound, I believe, or something to that effect tonight. I just so happen to go on the Connecticut Insider. I'm distressed by what I read. Dan Crosgrove Animal Shelter in Brantford is overwhelmed with abandoned pets. They've already outgrown the new addition that we've helped pay for. Some of it unwillingly, I believe. Why? would we get involved with an overactive group that is gonna already, their new addition's too small. All those animals are gonna eat. Their food bills are gonna go up. I think we gotta go with East Haven. They were more stable. They don't go outside. They don't take snakes. They don't take anything exotic. These people will take a worm and put a Band-Aid on it. I think it's time that we look into where are they going and why have they already outlived their new facility that we helped pay for. I just don't get it. And if anybody wants to read it, it's in black, well, yeah, no, it's in color. And uh, I don't understand, are they, are they too over, I don't know what they're doing. That that addition that they had to have and we had to pay for it is now overwhelmed with abandoned pets. Abandoned pets, more expense. I just don't like what I see. And they never listened to us when we screamed and yelled, we, you want money from us, but we have no representation. Then when we went to look at somebody that will really work with us, then they wanted to take us back. And I just don't think this is where we wanna go. That's my personal opinion, but I know you guys got to make a decision. Okay, also I want to bring up, um, I want to read a letter that I submitted to the rec department. 
Um, back on December 22nd, 2022, I'm going to read this verbatim. To the rec department manager, it's time for Mr. and Mrs. Potter to step down from all commitments we were involved with at the Potato Fest. We were both part of the beginning events that were held at the ball field in a tent borrowed from bishops many years ago. This is due to scheduling schedules, issues in our retirement plans. It's our turn now to get part of our summer back. We are both in our 70s, and I'm leaning more towards the high 70s, and we need more of August to ourselves because our grandchildren are off, are off of school. I will still do three tractor pulls, which will lead me into my last statement. Christmas hay rides and town hall decorations. This is not an easy decision I made, but it's a non-reversible right decision. And the reason I'm reading this is because I don't like what I'm reading on Facebook. It makes it sound like I only took a year off. My wife and I stepped down permanently for health reasons. It's just too damn hot for two of us to be out there two, three days in the summer. I'll still do the one day tractor pulls. We're gonna have one this weekend. And our tractor pulls to take all day long. We get so many tractors. And so not to have one at the Potato Fest was my decision because I'm loyal to the tractor pullers to come. Our full size tractors were to emphasize the farming that goes on in town. And that's what our mission still is. We want people to go by and see a, a farm tractor pulling and maybe they'll stop at Dean Francisco's or Larry Augers, something like that. It's to promote the farming in town. So I will still do that. I still love doing the Christmas track uh, hay rides. I get more out of that than the kids do. I mean, they come off with smiles all over. And I, we do two trailers full. Uh -huh. And you guys have been there. It's a way to open up the Christmas season. And that's what this town does. We're, we're family here. This town doesn't segment things. We're all in this together. From the dog park, to the potato fest, to the Christmas stuff, it's all town. So again, if you get a chance, stop out and watch us have our tractor pull this weekend. And that man and his crew make it all work. I don't do anything. I, I write an email and I put a sign up. The town public works does a lot to help everything. And people just don't realize how hard these guys work. I don't think to get praise until you work with function with them. And they're just right there. I mean, I hate to ask for anything because they're right there. They drop stuff and they help you. So my, my hat's off because I needed shade to them. <laughs> and they're great. So once again, if you want to stop by and see a tractor pull, but Rose, thank you for all you do. You, you, I still want to give you my wallet. I know there's money in here I can't find. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you guys, really, the tax bills, they could have been a lot worse if we lived in different towns. And I hear people from other towns complain. Uh -huh. And you guys did it good again and again. So, uh, Appreciate it. you know, it doesn't go unnoticed. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thanks, Cliff. Thank you, Mr. Thank Potter. You, Mr. Yes. Appreciate your spirited comments. We always enjoy them. Thank well, you very much. I, I tried to behave. I, I was going to say, with that 40, 400 amp, can't you put a couple pennies in there like we used to do at we home? Can, we could buy people to do that. Yeah. Remember that? We're going to put you on the committee. We're going to definitely you know, but I didn't know. I mean, <laughs> what, do that. what budget would you take the pennies out of? I got that a would feeling be more hard to do than get the pennies. We're right? not going to have to consult you on the helicopter, so if that's the way you're going about things. No, yeah. they're a fly by native yeah. organization. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. On to item 10, resignations and appointments. All right. So we have an appointment. Appointment A of Kathleen Daly as our town clerk expires 11-14-2023. I have a motion. So moved. Motion by, Dep or by uh, Councilor Angeloni. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Councilor Diamond. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Thank you, Ms. Daly. Thank you very much for taking on our, our wacky meetings and, uh, and being willing to write all the things we say. Uh, we'll try to make it a little easier for you. <laughs> but likely not. Okay. Item B: Appointment of uh, Elizabeth Sienna to the Pension Committee expires 2000. Or, I'm sorry, uh, December 1st, 2023. So moved. Motion by Councilor Do We have a second. 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 Yeah. The second was that Mr. Abelson, Councilor Abelson. Okay. Uh, Vacancy by someone? No, it, it, Staff Canada was the Board of Ed Rep, but yeah, I couldn't make he it. couldn't make the meeting, so they just put the alternate as the permanent yes. and then appointment, and then there's going to be an appointment for another. Correct. All right, any discussion? 
Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Thank you. Item C, appointment of Victoria Lanza as the alternate to the pension committee expires 12-1-2023. So moved. Second. Uh, all right, motion by Councillor Diamond, seconded by Councillor Angeloni. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Thank you. And then item D, appointments to the blueprint committee. All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna appoint the three members from the committees that the committees have already um, kind of decided on per se. Let me pull those up. And we'll go, we'll do the, we've had a number of folks on both the Northward and North Brantford side that are interested and we're, we're thankful for that, we appreciate it. Um, we, we certainly want to see people involved and we want to see new people involved. People that haven't, uh, you know, been part of of uh, committees in the past. So we, we encourage, we're going to give it another couple weeks before we, uh, two weeks, I should say, before we um, uh, appoint those uh, two other uh, spots, North Brantford spot, North Brantford spot. Uh, so if there's any more interest in this, please do send your resume as soon as possible, and we will get that out to the group, and we'll put together that committee meeting. Uh, so if I could have uh, a motion to approve. Can we do that in once? Do we have to do each one? We can do all together. A motion to appoint. Next boom, 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 boom. Okay. Why don't we do it like that? I have it. Let's see. Where is it? We're just looking at it before. Yes, yeah, Steve. It's, it's, it's from Park and Rec. Park and Rec is Steve Torino. Want me to read it? Uh, yes, Stand please. Would you mind, Ron? Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to appoint the following uh, people from the respective um, committees to the Blueprint Committee. From Parks and Recreation, Steve Torino. From Economic Development Commission, Dan Arman. And from Planning and Zoning Commission, Robert Nowak. Okay. So we have a motion by Council Pleacher. Do we have a second? Second. second. All right, so we're going to second by uh, Councillor Palandino. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. All right, thank you those folks uh, for being part of this committee. We'll, we're going to get this wrapped up as quick as possible and hopefully get those meetings started because we'd like to see some uh, reports back for by March. So we know we're not giving a whole heck of a lot of time, but we, uh, we're excited to see what this committee produces. Okay. On to item 11, unfinished business discussion action. Uh, A, creation of the 1831 committee. I think we're keeping this on here just so it's relevant. Uh, is there anything that we want to add to this at this point in time? Any further information, Mr. Downs? I have nothing. Okay, so we, I know we have a, some good information in our packets. We'll keep this on for a little bit. We'll probably start to work building out that committee in the fall. Okay. And then the intermunicipal animal control agreement. Uh, so. It, um, my thoughts here would be that we have a conversation amongst the councillors um, as to, you know, we've, we've heard both East Haven as well as uh, the Cosgrove Shelter um, as to their services. We have a comparison now that received uh, recently between the two services uh, financial commitments or, and expectations, I should say. Um, and we have a couple of questions, I think, some, a couple of outstanding questions amongst the differentiation. Um, we can choose to make action tonight, should we desire, or we also can choose to give it another couple of weeks to you know, discuss this now and, and then come into a decision for the first meeting in August. Um, we don't have to be hasty, per se, it's, but we also don't want to delay. Well, I, we don't I need personally to. think we should have some more time. We just got all that information yesterday afternoon about five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Plus we just got the more information this morning. I would personally would like a little more time and do it the first meeting in August. I haven't really had a chance. I can't it came about five o'clock this, That's this fair. afternoon. Yep. That's fair. That already. I personally think it's been put off for a long time and we should just we should vote on it. We've, we've had everybody in here, we people have toured it. I know I'm ready to vote. Okay, Councilor Mace. I agree with Walt. I mean, <clears throat> there were site visits. We took advantage of them. So <coughs> people have gone to both facilities to see the sites. Yep. The problem comes down to the price. We know one person is asking for 150 something thousand mm -hmm. for the contract, and the other group, the other party is asking for 135,000. So it's going to be 
you're going to get what you pay for. You're going to pay more money for a more updated facility. You're going to pay less money for a less updated facility. So and I agree with Wall. I mean, uh, I don't know what else there is to talk about or to discuss. Um, when I read the comparison chart, it's that's the comparison chart. Mm -hmm. It's one page. It took me a matter of maybe six minutes to read the, the page. So uh, I agree with Wall. I don't see why we can't maybe discuss people's personal likes and dislikes of each facility to see where we want to go before a motion is put, or a council, uh, me too, Mr. Mayor, if you want to go with the executive session so we can speak more freely about the facilities, that's up to you. But I agree with Wall. <clears throat> is it viable to bring that? In? I don't think it's viable for executive session, unfortunately. No. But plus, it's a special meeting. Don't forget. special meetings. We can't add to the agenda, unfortunately. Okay. But uh, I agree with Wall. I, I think. Uh, I don't know how anybody else feels, but I don't know what other information they need. I have I visit the facilities, I see the prices, yeah. I see what they have to offer, I compare them, I, I know where I want to go. I'll speak to my experience and then I'll let I think it's viable to let everyone speak to theirs and we can we can take it from here. We can go in either direction. Uh, I did visit both facilities. I went to both East Haven and to Brantford. Um, I've been part kind of working on this process of projects for you know, about, about two years now. Um, and obviously um, was not happy with the initial contract or agreement we had in place with Brantford, um, particularly the uh, desire for us to pay for um, you know, upgrades and updates um, and uh, capital improvements when we are not an owner. And uh, more, you know, I wanted to see it as a service, you know, service-based agreement, which has been done. We, we were able to get to there. Uh, it wasn't the easiest process to get to there, unfortunately, but we were able to get to that point. Um, I want to reiterate, regardless of what direction we go in, we are saving money. So we're, we're, there's a cost savings on both. Obviously, there's about a $20,000 delta between East Haven and, uh, and the Cosgrove Shelter. Um, I did visit both, and I think I was leaning towards East Haven originally. Um, due to a number of things. I think they would do a fine job if they were here. Uh, however, um, when I did visit the Brantford shelter, the Cosgrove shelter, um, I did see that they had a number of other um, services that were provided to our town. And particularly, uh, it was brought to our attention, although uh, we're, we're still not sure if necessarily the numbers um, you know, are, uh, prove this to be accurate. But there was different type of calls that came into North Brant from North Brantford. Uh, in the past, I think one of the areas that was confusing was we were looked at as Brantford and whole, so we, when we couldn't necessarily devise what the differentiation from a North Brantford call to a Brantford call was, and I think that's been fixed. Um, but I, from what I've, we've been explained, there's a lot of things that happen in North Brantford, particularly livestock, farm animals, um, that <clears throat> need to be tended to. Uh, that possibly the East Haven shelter doesn't have the capability to do. Um, so I felt comfortable when, I, when they explained that to me. And then the second part of my decision process was I've been, um, I've been approached by many of our constituents um, with their desire for us to support the Cosgrove shelter. So obviously that weighs heavy on me as well. Uh, it is my ultimate vote, one vote here on this uh, this podium, but it's ultimately being casted for those folks who we represent, uh, and that's how I felt. So that's my piece. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll right to left. Whoever wants to go next, you can certainly, you know, talk your your thoughts. Is your, everybody? Your has everyone gone and visited? Well, I, I just I, my 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 take on on this is, um, Anthony, how much did we pay last year? I I could check for you. It should be the 150, yeah, right. uh, 157, 608 annually, which is what they were They kept that's, it flat. That's, that's their proposal. We were going to go up to 170. Right. So, <clears throat> so my take on it is it's flat. There's, if, we, if we go with Brantford, there's no savings. If we go with East Haven, there is a savings, 135,000 or whatever the difference is. Um, we asked for services A, B, and C. I believe all, both facilities can take care of our services. Does one have some extra 
bells and whistles? Yes, yes they do, but that's not the service we asked for. Um, and so I, I find it, I, I can't justify in my mind to spend more tax dollars when we can get the same, the, the services we required from from uh, a town that can provide our a service, or a animal shelter that can provide it to us. So that, that's where I'm at with it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anyone else like to share their thoughts? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Mr. Rice. Let's that. Now, I know that Brainford and East Haven set up specified times and bus trips for the town council. I did not attend those, all right? And I'll tell you why I did not attend those. Because I know everybody's going to be on their best behavior. They're going to put out the bells and they're going to do all of this stuff. I went on my own in the middle of the day because I wanted to see them how they were without being prepared for somebody to show up. Sneak attack. Nice. I went to Brantford. I was really impressed with the facilities. I didn't tell them who I was. I said, can I have a look at the facility? And they were, well, they were well staffed. They took me through all of the rooms, uh, through the dog kennels. They did everything. I was really impressed, not only with the facility, but with how many people they had working there that day. I left there and I went over to East Haven. The doors were locked. I knocked on the door, I looked in the windows. Nobody was there. This was the middle of the day. I don't know if they were out on a run or whatever they were. So I hung around about 15 minutes or so while the people were cutting, the guys were cutting the grass and stuff. Nobody showed up, so I left. So that was very impressionable upon me. And I agree with Tom to this respect that Brantford is a much more highly sophisticated facility than East Haven. But I'm also looking at what Brantford has to offer. They have their officer can, if they have to shoot a deer or whatever it is, or they take care of an animal, they can do that where East Haven does it. And also look at where Brantford is located. Right by Route 1, which shoot right into North Brantford, whereas East Haven, you have to come down Hemingway Avenue and come through all the traffic and everything else. So Brantford has not only the facility, the staffing, but the location, which are good real estate terms, to, 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 to suit uh, North Brantford. And they hope, they, they, they can help us out you know, you see Cliff Connor, Cliff Potter getting up here, talking about a farming community where we have farm animals and all different types of things, and that's what we are. We are more of a farming community than East Haven is a farming community, and Brantford is more like us than East Haven. So, uh, and I know that Brantford is a few dollars more, but uh, like anything else, uh, you get what you pay for, you know? Not only facility, but also they're well staffed from what I saw. And my, my visits were unexpected. They did not know I was gone, but I did it. Okay. Any other? I, I found when I, when I talked to people from Brantford, they do a lot for our farmers. I don't think people realize how many calls they get out. The goat got away or a bunch of sheep or whatever. We also have a lot of senior citizens that volunteer in Brantford. We have a lot of programs for kids in Brantford. I, I was very impressed with what they offer for us. You have to look at all the services, not just how many calls I got for cats and dogs. I think we, we should have realized too, when we, one of the, we have one of the first presentations, this room was packed. People do like what happens in Brantford. They do get involved in Brantford. Um, I personally, when I saw the facility in East Haven, I was worried about their ability, particularly with farm animals. Whereas Brantford has set up a little barn, for, particularly for North Brantford, so they could help with, with farm animals. Overall, I, I know that there's a difference in cost, and I understand and I agree with what Tom's saying, but I think you have to look at all pieces and all aspects of what they can offer. Tom Pledger? Yeah, so I, unlike some of my colleagues up here, I did tour both facilities. Um, and the facilities, whether they're new or older, uh, doesn't really phase me, but the capacity uh, is, is something I took into consideration. And I don't know necessarily that East Haven has the capacity to support North Brantford. Um, and uh, like the mayor said, there, there's also the community connection that they've built over the years. Um, if certain animals do get loose, we're talking about farm animals and stuff, they, a lot, they've been servicing the community for so long, they know pretty much where those animals came from. 
So sometimes those calls don't get logged into the statistics because they know where the animal lives and they'll just pick up the animal and bring them back to Farmer Brown's house and close the gate and, you know, job done. So it doesn't get logged in necessarily as a call unless they take possession of the animal. So um, I think one thing, I, I think we, I think we probably get adequate service from both, but I think, um, you know, given the history, um, the facility, the capacity, I, I think, uh, you know, I'm definitely leaning towards, towards Brantford. Um, and again, all the, all the community involvement and the people that, uh, from our town that are also involved over at Dan Cosgrove. So, um, you know, but I, I think if, if we did decide to go with Dan Cosgrove again, I think we should sit down with them and we should have clearer expectations as far as reporting and, you know, these, these animals that don't necessarily get logged in, maybe there should be a separate log kept just so that we can keep track for our own information as to, you know, yet yeah, it didn't get logged in with the state, but, you know, we, we have something to look at and refer to that says that, um, you know, there was an actual call in North Brantford. You were in North Brantford, you, you dealt with this um, so that we can have a little bit more accurate uh, accounting of all the different calls. Um, so uh, I actually did the same as uh, Councilor Mays. I didn't go on the bus trip. I actually showed up at both facilities um, unannounced. <laughs> Um, went to East Haven first. Uh, they were open. Talked to the to the girl there. Um, she, the day I was there, she was actually doing an adoption of a cat. Um, and she let me to the facility. It's an older facility. Um, I asked her a lot of questions, if they can take care of farm animals. Um, and she said, not a problem. So, you know, they're, I don't think they're equipped to do farm animals but I believe that they can probably handle the farm animals. Um, it is an older facility. I wasn't overly impressed, but uh, when I went to Brantford, I was, did the same thing. I didn't announce who I was. Um, they gave me a complete tour. The day I was there, there was a goat like, running around the facility. Um, you know, I agree with Ron that uh, if we do go with Brantford, there has to be more accountability. Because that's the reason why we're kind of doing what we're doing. Is I think um, kind of got out of hand. And we weren't kind of watching the store with them. And uh, shame on us. <coughs> but um, Brantford's been with us for a very long time. And there are a lot of people in the town that do a lot of volunteer work with them. Um, their new facility is awesome. I just don't want to pay for that as far as, I don't think we should, I mean, we pay enough. I just don't think that, you know, I'm afraid that if we do go with them, all of a sudden, you know, it's going to be, they're going to request something from us. Maybe not. I don't know, but... Um, you review the contract. We can review the agreement. I'm just, you know, That's I, a, I, I just, I saw what can happen in 2024. You know, we can go to almost five and a half percent. So, uh, you know, East Haven's at four um, percent. But I do, I, I agree with Ron, as far as if we do go with Brantford, we have to do more accountability. I think we were... Um, you know, as a municipality, you're, we allowed them to be in the position to ask for what they asked for because we signed it. So if we're going to kind of point a finger at the lopsided uh, well, agreement, I think what we should do is let everyone, oh, let everyone yeah. say their piece, right. you know? Before. Absolutely. I'm sorry. All right. So Thank listen you. to a lot of what no, that's fine. You're right. ev everyone else said. A um, couple things. Um, so... Deputy Mayor, um, I agree wholeheartedly with it being a service contract that if we can do something for a little bit less, especially with some of the money that we've been spending in this town on much needed projects, not saying that we didn't need a new police station, high school, absolutely, we needed all that. 
Um, so with that, the deputy mayor also asked for numbers from Brantford as to these calls for service. Um, Brantford provided them for the last six months and all this talk of, well, we do this and we do that, the numbers don't support it. Now, I understand what Councillor Polici is saying with, well, we don't really log this stuff like that. I have a real problem with that and I have real questions with it. And the reason I do is because I haven't been a police officer for 20 years now. Uh, I work with animal control. I work within the East Hartford and when I worked in East Haven, I did that too. So they get logged, they get dispatched out, at least in East Haven, through police, fire, dispatch. I'm sure it's the same in Cranford. Those calls get logged. There's a case number. It doesn't mean they have to log it as we impounded an animal. We do things like that in East Hartford a lot. You don't think farming in East Hartford, but there is a small section that has that. And Farmer Brown's cows get out and we get called there and our ACOs go out there. Guess what? There's a case number behind that. They can show me those numbers. So I don't, I don't buy these numbers that, um, that they're selling us with Brantford. Um, I don't like the fact that we, as a town, had issues and there were questions with Brantford over the years and they really didn't want to budge and they wanted to say, no, you're going to help pay for this facility. And it wasn't until East Haven came in and said, hey, we're willing to do this and we're willing to do it for less that Brantford wanted to come back to the table. I do like that, okay, maybe East Haven doesn't have the nicest facility, but to correct one thing that you said, Councillor Mays, it's actually East Haven that has the armed animal control officers, not Brantford. Um, again, that's neither here nor there. It's just one more service they offer. I know how East Haven operates because I worked alongside them. I know how Owen Little operated. He operated that shelter forever. He is a town resident. He does have ties to this community. He still has ties to that animal shelter so much as that he retired and he's still working there part time. So not to say that I don't think Brantford can do a good job. They have a beautiful facility. I'm sure their animal control officers are capable. They typically all get the same state certification and training. So just because they have a nicer facility, I don't think we should have to spend more money for that, for the same type of service. And you know, I, I also, I understand that there's ties with this community to, to volunteer there. No one's saying that people can't do that still. So with that, um, my vote would be for restatement. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to speak because I just spoke up about wanting to vote, but I did not state my opinion. Please. Um, I'm going to duplicate 90% of what you just said. And I think that both um, animal controls can do the same job. Brantford, of course, has a bigger, fancier facility now. They put a lot of money into it. Um, but I kind of have a chip on my shoulder towards Brantford because of the way that they wanted us to pay for that building. And then when we started looking around, all of a sudden everything changed. Now we didn't need to pay for the building. The prices started dropping. So basically they were taking advantage of us. And then they came here and said, oh, yeah, we did fundraisers. I mean, it's like literally they found the money. But if they could have, they would have kept going. And we're not talking a little bit of money. We're talking they wanted, what, over a million dollars for that building. And you know, now they're dropping their prices, trying to satisfy us. And when this, um, it was, I'm not sure the exact date, but it was probably over a year or two ago when we first started talking about this, when they came in and presented on everything they had done over the year, they actually had a log showing of all their calls. And I questioned the girl that was here. And I, the facts that they gave us, I was so shocked on how low the numbers were on what we were paying. You know, you would think there'd be a lot of pickups, but there really wasn't. The numbers were ridiculously low. I couldn't believe they actually gave us that piece of paper showing how low the numbers were. So I, and at the same time, the volunteers, I noticed a lot of volunteers, a lot of people in town. If we were to go with East Haven, it would actually be a good thing for those volunteers because now they'd have two places to go. Costco is not going to say you can't come volunteer and help our animal control. People can go to the Brantford one, and now East Haven will be part of our community, and people can go to East Haven. And I, I personally believe East Haven needs a shot. They deserve to have a shot at it. And if, if it turns out that we're not happy with it, we could always go back. But that's my opinion. I'm the last one. Um, so I, I would have to agree. I, I agree what 
Walt and with Nick and Deputy Mayor, I really have a problem with what Bramford was charging us and the way they were charging us. Because actually in the current budget year, the number that's in our budget is $175,000. That's what we passed in our budget because we had not decided at that time. That was the new price coming in and we had to go with that because we didn't know where we were going with this. And then all of a sudden, oh, by the way, oh, we'll hold your price to 157,000. And oh, that million dollars that we were asking for our building, you can just forget about that too. And we had been trying to negotiate with them for a couple years in regards to that, and they didn't want to be bothered with it. And then, like it was mentioned before, all of a sudden, now we're here. Service-wise, I agree with the deputy mayor. We are paying for a service. Yes, you cannot compare the two buildings. Brantford spent a lot of money. They fundraised, but they also spent a lot of money to get that facility. And does it give us any difference what we've asked for? We get the same type of service is what East Haven is predicting on there. They said they would do this. We asked for A, B, and C. They said they could do A, B, and C for us on there. I just don't like the financial end of it from Brantford, and I think we were taken advantage of for a number of years from Brantford because they figured North Brantford's not going any place. And I don't think that's right, what they did. And so it's, it, it is, it'll be a drop from what is in our budget, but East Haven is still cheaper for the same types of service. And you have to, in my mind, you have to, you can't look at the facility um, on there. And I agree, the numbers that we got do not support what they were telling us. So we can bring this to a vote now, or we can, I'm, I'm looking for the, your heads if you want to, Take a moment to think through this, or I'm so torn. You guys bring up. I'm a little torn myself. You guys bring up good points. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, it's honestly, it's, yeah, I'm torn myself. Let's put it off in a couple of weeks. No, let's, let's do it. it. Let's do it. Yeah. Pull it the bandage off. Okay, so I'll just make the motion, and then we can just take the vote on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like to make a motion that we approve the I'd like to make a motion that the North Brantford Town Council hereby authorizes Town Manager Michael P. Downs to enter into an agreement for animal control services with the Town of East Haven under the terms outlined in their draft agreement. Second. And if you could please add in such form as is acceptable to the Town Attorney. In such form as acceptable to the Town Attorney. I'm in the motion. What he's in. such form as acceptable to the Town yeah. Attorney. And I second it. Thank you. Uh, we'll do this as a roll call vote. Discussion, Mr. Chair. Right. Give us a call for any final discussion. Oh, first. yes, of course. Uh, so we have a motion by Councilor Jones. Do we have a second by, I'm sorry. Councilor Abelson. Councilor Abelson, thank you. All right, any further discussion? Yeah, I'll speak against the motion, but I still think, and I appreciate what uh, Nick and Tom and uh, Rosa have said in the walk, um, <clears throat> but I, uh, I still feel that um, although Brantford may cost uh, I understand some of the issues from years ago, but we weren't, not all of us were here to deal with those issues years ago. We're here now, and we should take into the present, not the past, of what they did. And if the previous town council members allowed them to get away with it, then that's on them, not on us. We're here to deal with the present, and the present is that I believe, you know, and I'll reiterate just briefly that Brainford is not only the better facility, it's the more well-staffed facility and it's closer proximity. And uh, I would speak against these statement uh, and I would support them. Yeah, I mean, that's my argument. My discussion point would be that um, I think they're both fantastic facilities. I don't think we're gonna go wrong either way. I do think though, contrary to your belief, we're gonna save money either way. It's less than the, the Brantford's going to be less than the expected cost. 
and obviously savings less money um, beyond that. Um, we got we entered into an agreement prior, and that municipality was holding us to the agreement that we signed on the dotted line for. Um, and with competition, they've made the decision to try to earn our business, and I respect that. Uh, I just have to comment that <clears throat> for years we, we had been trying to negotiate with them, get them to, to the table, and it was very, it was difficult. It, it didn't happen, really. So um, although today's the future, yesterday was the past, the best way to predict, predict the future is, is history. No, history that. tells us what the future is. I will, I will counter that with they did talk to us. So I, I know because I was at the meeting. It was myself, uh, Tom Andropoulos, and Anthony Esposito. And at that time period, when we, when we met with um, Mr. Cosgrove and their finance director, uh, they asked for us, because we, we expressed the, our opinion that we weren't going to pay for the, um, the, you know, the increases due to the uh, capital improvements. Um, they said, let's get on a holding pattern. And see what we can what we can do to, to get monies in uh, for donations to, to offset that. So they were honest in that capacity. I have to that has to, it has to be something right. to consider. Right. I was at that. Meeting. But 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 it's the same people in Brantford we're we're, we're dealing yeah, with. I get it. And this goes before when I first got on the council. We've we've been dealing with this for quite some time, and it actually went nowhere. Every year went nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Um, and in fact, if we paid $157,000 last year, we're going to pay $157,000 this year. I'm not, that's real dollars. We're not saving anything. That's, that's even. That's flat. <clears throat> no, it doesn't matter what you put yeah. in the budget. Yeah. Whereas in East Haven, You're we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna save money. And then if, if as it goes up after every year or whatever, however the contract reads, the increases, it's going to go up from that base, not the higher base. So, um. good point. everyone's making good points. It doesn't, it definitely, it, it's not an easy choice. It, it's true, it's not an easy choice. Uh, there's, all right. Okay, so uh, any other further discussion? Seeing none, put it to a vote, please. Councillor Mace. I vote no against your statement. Councillor Abelson. Yes. Councillor um, Gold. Yes. Councillor Fleet. Councillor Paladino? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Diamond? No. Councillor Felicia? No. Deputy Mayor Sampano? Yes. Mayor McMillan? No. Okay, looks like uh, East Haven has it. Thank you. Okay. All right, on to the next item. I knew that was going to be a fun one today. <laughs> okay. Item 12, new business discussion and action. Item A, communication license agreement with Homeland Towers. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the town council, this is the uh, proposed agreement. Uh, for us to enter into uh, a communications license agreement with Homeland Towers, that is the Northford uh, Tower. Uh, this agreement has been reviewed by our town attorney uh, and has been deemed agreeable and uh, has also been reviewed by our radio consultants as well. just make one statement about Please. it? Please. I know that it is our responsibility for the generator, but Homeland has been telling us all along that we're going to be able to hook on to a Verizon generator when they come in, and I hope that if we sign this contract now, that they don't change their mind. I just want, I just think we should be assured that they're, that Homeland is going to work with us to make sure that we don't have to purchase a generator, that they've been telling us from day one that we were going to be able to hook onto the um, Verizon generator. That's my biggest concern when I look at that contract. Is there a, a rider that, we could, that can be? It says in there that we're responsible right now. But does it give an end date? 
Um, I don't. I didn't see it on there. That's why. I, I know that uh, we are responsible, but. So, Thank you. I got a question. <laughs> so, for every provider that goes on the tower, each provider has to provide their own generator. I understand that, but we have been told from day one that Verizon was going to let us share their generator. Is that was part of the agreement. In writing. I'm just, I'm just telling Cause you. Because every provider that. that goes on that tower has to provide their own generator. Bruce, I know that. Okay. What I'm telling you is, we were told from the beginning that we would be able to go on gener um, Verizon's generator. I just want to bring that up. So we probably want to have that like in writing, right? I, I would hope. We, I would. we need to see it. We'd have to have some sort of writing so that they would. I'm not sure you're going to get that too easily, though, because that would need to come not from, from the Verizon, Verizon. Right? No, but we can't go Verizon. by just their word. I mean, it's okay. either yes or no, right? I mean, you're talking about Verizon. They're not going to give you any. So we got to get our own. I think we do. That, that's not true. We have agreements at all the other tower sites to share their generators. Yeah. With, with really? Verizon. With Verizon? Yes. So, so is there a way, Anthony, for us to get it in writing? Excuse me? It's actually a common practice for them when they're when there's emergency responders on the on the tower to let them plug in. It's a normal business for them. So do you guys think that this agreement should read that way then? I don't know if it's read at all. So if I may add, we, we have received from Verizon uh, and their council a generator agreement, uh, generator use agreement, allowing the town to use the Verizon generator at the uh, uh, North Brantford and North Brantford 2 sites, which we've reviewed and it, it's acceptable. So it's just not on for your approval yet because it only came in the end of last week. Too late yeah. to get on your agenda. Yeah. So we got it writing. But they it's are. Writing. <coughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. There it is. Then we're good. All right. So then we're good to go. Good to bring that up. Good to bring up. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> well done. Thank you, Brian, for looking at it. Okay. So what actions? Do I still have to ride in the helicopter or no? No, you're, you're so far. You're still on the helicopter. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna take you right over the tower. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna show yeah, you the tower. Yeah, we want to hit the tower in the helicopter. Yeah, we won't hit the tower. We promise. Be the we might promise. We have it in writing that we won't hit the tower. But. So, so, I don't see any. So, do we have to approve this? Is that what? I didn't see anything in the language. Approve um, authorizing me to sign on behalf of the town. Okay, so we'll make a motion as such. Okay. We'll authorize the town manager to sign it. And Let's to that's execute the, the communications license agreement between the town of North Brantford and Homeland Towers. I'll vote for that. As okay. long as we have it cleared up. All right, we have a motion by Councilor Diamond. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Deputy Mayor Zampano. Any discussion? I have a question. Please. Is this holding them up from um, getting a permit from the town? This license the, agreement? The agreement from us? No. It's not part of the rain delay at all. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Thank you. Okay, on to item B, set public hearing for Tuesday, August 1st, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. regarding designation, um, designating the town of North Brantford as a rehabilitation area for established criteria for the eligibility of real property for assessment, deferral, and administrative procedures. Mayor, if I could, I'll have uh, Assistant Town Manager Rory Burke come up to address you on this item. Please. I didn't see him over there. <laughs> hey, Rory. I did not see you. <laughs> Hiding behind the column. Hiding behind the column. Good evening. Um, so I had sent a memo to the council a few weeks back about the deferral program, uh, which sunsetted in 2021. In order to reauthorize it, the state statute requires that a public hearing be held. Um, and as I outlined the memo, then it must go to the Planning and Zoning Commission for an A24 referral before it can come back to the Council for action. Okay. So this would be the first step. All right, thank you. I'd like to make a motion that the Town Council set a public hearing for Tuesday, August 1st at 7.30 p.m. regarding designating the Town of North Brantford as a rehabilitation area and establishing criteria for the eligibility of real property for assessment, deferral, and administrative procedures. Okay, 
Thank you. We have a motion by Councilor Angeloni. Do I have a second? Second, second by uh, Councilor Palandino. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Thank you. Okay, item C, proposed signage for North Penn for Police Department Emergency Operations Center project. Um, we have some, we have information in our packet that went through that with us. Uh, did you want to say something, Deputy Mayor? Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the significance of it. Well, I think because there's state money that is part of this project, we have to put a sign up because it's, because the grant money? Maybe? Yeah, I, I, okay, I understand that, but you know, it's saying thank you taxpayers, but that's only a, a portion of the, uh, of the project. What, what do you mean? Well, it's the, it's the police department, uh, let me see where, the, the North Grammar Police Department slash Emergency Operations Center project. So are we just putting a sign up to recognize the emergency part of it? or are we putting a sign up to recognize the whole project? Um, it's the whole project, because it's at the top. It yeah. says North Brantford Police okay. Facility, a new facility for our community. Correct. Right, okay, so so then is that is that the appropriate, should there be other people being recognized on the police commission possibly? I think Town this is, council. well, I think this is I mean, just the sign that goes out for, during the construction phase, right. correct? That right. you have, because the state, because there's state money, that's the whole thing. It's it's like when we built the high school, when we did the roof for Stanley T, we had to put a sign up because yeah. we have state money. We're not recognizing the, anybody, are we? No. Yeah, yeah, they are right. They want a big time. Well, it's, the state what, is requiring what page, this. Tommy, what page is that? It's, 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 uh, there's not a page. Yeah, there's there's down. Is a page. No, it's yeah. not a page. It's not a page. It's not a page. It's not Thank you. Yeah. 35 on the tablet. You lucky ones. <laughs> yeah, those of you that still have those a tablet. Those of you are yeah. still lucky to keep it. Yeah, we don't have. I think holding up though. You, see, you might want to do that, yeah. There's no pages on the, on the whatever book this is here. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Yeah, I, either. I looked at it and that's that's what went through my mind. Like we're recognizing the, the state. Yeah. We're saying thank you, taxpayers, but we're recognizing the state. Right. It, it's it's also the feds at, the, at the bottom for the committee moment. members and the yeah. council members on that. It's it's typical. It would be unusual not to have that, as we had in in the in the. For the high school, the, the no, this isn't going inside. The no, 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 we're not no, talking no, about a plaque. Just, no, no, we're talking no. about the, the, the stupid the sign that has to, the stage is requiring I, I can, us. I can care less, but I'm saying typically you would see that on there, like you did in the high school. No, yes, it's on the high school. Go look, <laughs> it's there. It says it's us, it's there. Your name's on it, I'm pretty sure. Even you're talking about the one in the high school, no, not the plaque. We're talking about in the, in the, I, 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 I care less, to be honest with you. But <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I'm Bob saying Big Leon's name was on it. Bob's on it. Yeah, Bob yeah. was the mayor on the, during that right. time period, and, and the and the council that council is on there as well. <coughs> I think that's what you're. Your well, I, it and just it may, and like I say, it might mission. be small. I just noticed, and I said, well, we're, we're saying this, this, and this, but who are we supposed to be? It's not a state project. It's a town project right. with state funds as well Correct. and federal funds. Right. Yeah. What's that? The king needs to be recognized. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel less. Right. Can we just do a sign without recognizing us? Yeah, I, yeah, I, we, just, yeah, no I just brought it up as, as a point. It, as, you know, I'm just saying it, it's probably small. I just, it just no, I just noticed it. Yeah. And I thought I'd question it. So. I, I, I mean, when we maybe? when we just did the roof at Stanley T and had to put the sign out for the state. I don't remember seeing the town council's name and all that I stuff on no, there. I don't, it was, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think your name was on it. Yeah, she yeah, said, just, said, <laughs> just <laughs> wrote that song. <laughs> Presented by. I mean, ordinarily, I mean, if, if, I, if I could, Mr. Mayor. So yes, ordinarily please. when I see these, when we see these types of construction signs up there, they're usually kind of a bland sign. They're usually a white sign with the blue lettering and yes. a state seal on it. This is just a bit of a punched up version of it that kind of 
enhances it with a you know a rendering of the department and this was actually drafted by representative candelora's office so his graphics guy produced this looks good to me okay. yeah, i have no problem with the way it is yeah i can't get it i don't, I don't, I don't see it all right, I make a motion that the proposed sign design as depicted for the North Brantford Police Department and EOC project be adopted. Second. <laughs> motion by Councilor Angeli, seconded by Councilor Tyrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it was your regular All right, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Thank you. Okay. All right. On to item D, request for hazardous waste and recycling committee. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you've got the, the memo packet, and uh, we do have Bill Savistano from the committee here. I just wanted to quickly point your attention to a memo I dropped off in there into your folders today, just clarifying one of the items, uh, which was the Tucket Times item in the memo that was in your packet. Okay. Um, I got clarification they wanted to use NIP funding for a flyer to be inserted in the Tucket Times. I believe that's right. And that's what the intent was for that, mm -hmm. which would have, would be a completely appropriate use for the NIP fund if you chose. Of course. Uh, and then they're also seeking to do uh, mileage reimbursement for the volunteers that do trash collection. Uh, and would like to fund it out of the NIP fund as well. And I believe they can do this, but they would need to just have travel expense line created with uh, the funds allocated from the NIP fund, and the volunteers would need to track and submit their mileage for the requests. Okay. Um, if I could, I guess let's, let's hear from uh, Bill for the committee and can speak to this. Bill Savistano, uh, Sunnyside Drive. Yes, sir. I entertain any questions. Uh, you have to be... Uh, I'll, just, I'll just make a brief statement. This, uh, does everybody know what the NIP money is? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, briefly, in October uh, 2021, legislature approved this uh, money to be uh, a nickel to be added to every uh, charge that the uh, liquor distributors charge the, uh, the, uh, the uh, liquor stores. And that money goes back to the state and then eventually comes to the town. Now the first year in two installments, we got 13, a little over 13,000. You see a figure of 23 here. I think if I'm right, Mike, that's half of the next year's uh, money coming in. So it seems like they're paying in half year installments. Now that money could fluctuate every year, depending on the, how the people buy the nips. That represents, believe it or not, 260,000 nips sold in the town of North Brentford. Anyway, another, if you go, if you look into it, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of money in the big cities in New Haven and stuff like that. But uh, so at some point, a few months back, uh, the committee was uh, tasked with uh, uh, what are we going to do with this money? So we, we actually sat down and we had as many as 24 different things to do. And then we were asked to work them down and that's the three you see in front of you. Mm -hmm. Now I say the, we only got 13,000 a year because the first item there requires about 11,000. So that chews up pretty much the, the first year. Although we're already a year ahead, so we still got uh, you know, the other 10,000. But the idea is to clean up the parks. I did speak with Hank, uh, who's the other person on my committee. Uh, that he actually worked with Park and Rec as the ranger a couple of years ago as a part-time thing. And he said, basically, park, for all the parks in town, it took him three two-hour days to do the parks. Sure. Now, what we're looking for is not only do the parks here, that would help to public works guys in reference to lawnmowers and stuff like that. So they uh, help them with that. But uh, the other part is clean up around the town. So the other 12 hours uh, would be, uh, you know, afforded to around town. This this uh, could be a good thing, depend, depending on the right person you hire. If that person 
hustles, it could be a good thing. I think you learn from it. Uh, if you did it for one year, from from uh, you know spring to fall, and then uh, if you keep some notes on it, then uh, um, again, you, you, could, you wouldn't be signing on for year after year unless you, you wanted to. But you can learn from that. Okay. Uh, the second item is, uh, what is that second item? That's the signs, the A-frame signs. Oh, the A-frame signs to be used around town. We changed the letters so okay. everything looks nice and neat. And the third item is? That's the uh, insert for Tataka Times. Insert for Tataka Times. That came about because, as you know, uh, the Times is spreading their uh, delivery. They're even skipping some weeks. So I guess they're a little hurting for money. So uh, the we get a half of one page in there. And most of the time, it's always that. Any time it, uh, it's any different is, be, is uh, during the voting season where they get some other uh, letters to, in there. But so it doesn't cost us anything. But we felt as though we should subsidize the talk of times and at the same time work up a nice supplement to what our normal ad is. That's great. So that's the reason for, for that. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have to have action on this, or is it just more? It's up to the council. Informational. I just have, I just have one question, and it's not that I'm opposed to it, but the whole mileage thing, from what I'm reading in here, it's not clear to me that that's something that fits. Okay, that. That money. So. That's directly Hank and myself. There's two of us that take care of that that uh, a plastic film recycling program you see in town, and basically we've both been doing it. I came in halfway through the first year, six years ago. And uh, so, and we also had the school children involved. They used to do Wednesdays. Hank and I would do Mondays and Fridays. They would do Wednesdays. And a pandemic messed up, something like that, and down to him and I. So uh, Hank actually did a spreadsheet. And like my route from my house to these stops to back to Public Works and then the Big Y. It's about 50, and give or take a little more, maybe just 70 miles a week. Now, we have been doing it, getting no reimbursement because basically uh, once uh, uh, we don't have a lot of money in the regular budget. But since the NIP money came along, we thought we could get reimbursed. Like I said, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I just want to make sure we're not doing anything outside of what we should be doing. So meaning maybe Brian, are you aware of the net money and what it can do? I'm aware of it, but not to this detail of mileage. Uh, I could look into that. There's a highlighted section in our yeah. packet yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't it, it doesn't say anything about that. What it says is the uh, summaries. If I could, yeah, it's, it's directly out of summary, so it wouldn't be directly out of the out of the law. I mean, my interpretation of it is because. I think the nexus can be made um, that it is that the reimbursement is directly funding the elimination of litter. I think it could be, but of course I would defer the attorney. Yeah, yeah I would just like uh, to get clarification on that before we went ahead with right. it, just to yeah. make sure we don't shoot ourselves in the foot. So why don't we push why this to the that? next council meeting? Yeah. We'll address it then for certain. Statute. We'll file our own. Yeah. But just to make sure we can cross our T's and dot our I's, we'll have our town attorney look at it. Okay. okay, and lastly, there was the last paragraph had uh, reference to uh, mattresses, pick, and pick up mattresses. Mm -hmm. And that came about a couple of years back because uh, the bulky waste in the fall and in the spring, they all lo also line up with uh, e waste events, fall and spring. Mm -hmm. In other words, on a particular Saturday, the following, when we have our e-waste event, the people are allowed to bring mattresses. Yep. Except for the one we had a couple of weeks ago, we were getting three to four dozen mattresses three times a year. Except for this past one, we went down to zip, uh, seven actually. But anyway, the point is, uh, and what we noticed, when the bulky waste was the week after the uh, the e-waste events, even though we got four mattresses in the, at the event, there were still four dozen 
laying around town. Mm -hmm. The idea was to use the public work employees mm -hmm. to, to gather up those mattresses and bring them to public works. Now, they would have to do them at that time. We're not talking about any other time. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about those two weekends gotcha. because we have four dozen in there already. And because we're not allowed to, uh, uh, by permit, we're not allowed to store stuff without yeah. state stuff. So, uh, but, so there again, if uh, the public works could do it, that would be helpful. If, if it, it's a, uh, a money situation uh, for the overtime, it wouldn't be overtime generally. It doesn't have to be done on Saturday. It could be done during the week. So that we can talk to Fran at DF if they have the ability to. Yeah, so again, that money would okay. could be uh, come out of the NIP money. All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for reprising us. Bruce, uh, Bruce, did you want to? I'm sorry, Bill, Bruce. Bill, no. Bill, I do have one question. Yeah. The mileage that you drive. Yeah. Is that a week, a month? How, and what is that? 50 miles, 50 to 70 a week. A week is that, yeah. and that's times two, right? Times, oh, two guys, yeah. He, so, he, so his route is actually a, a little bit less, but about the same. It's approximately 100 miles a week. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you, Bill. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay, we're going to have uh, our town attorney look at this. Right, and I can uh, see what the statute says, if you'd like. Now, I just found it. Yeah, if you if feel you comfortable. Like, if it saves you any time, but yeah, it says, uh, all payments received by any municipality pursuant to this section shall be expended by such municipality on environmental measures intended to reduce the generation of solid waste in such municipality or reduce the impact of litter caused by such solid waste, including, but not limited to, the hiring of a recycling coordinator, the installation of storm drain filters, uh, the purchase of a mechanical sweet street sweeper vacuum or broom. Uh, uh, so it does say, including but not limited to, so as long as your expenditure, there's no further guidance, so as long as the expenditure uh, uh, are, is part of an environmental measure intended to reduce the generation of solid waste or reduce the impact of litter caused by solid waste, it would be appropriate. So you would, you would deem it appropriate to do so, as long as we have the proper... Um, as long as the mileage was for one of those two measures to reduce gotcha. the solid waste. Okay. Yes, sir. We just have to make sure that we, you know, Bill, you'd have to properly and the gentleman would have to properly um, keep a log. Keep a log for that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'd have to have a log, not just, you know, this, there would have to be a pretty specific log. Yeah, typically there's a, a program that you can use online that would, you, you put in your mileage as you're, you're starting your trip, and then right. it, it, it almost like tracks you. Um, I don't know if we want to get into that. I don't know if it's even cost. <laughs> I would think just a, a simple that, yeah. writing it down. Writing it, it down from here to there. Yeah. yeah. So many miles here to there. So many miles. Yeah. If you, I think that's so document documentation, of course. Yeah. Just proper just receipts when per se. Starts off and when he ends. Yeah. yeah. Not. I don't think he has to put it in the stops. It's just if he's doing it. You know, starting in Northford, and he ends up in, let's say, go to North Brantford, and then he returns back to the, the, to the recycling center. That's his mile. So it's, it's it's the start and the end. It's not in between. You don't have to do anything in between. Some do. Could we simplify it though, if we know his bill. typical yes. route, and it's yes. you know, if you have a typical 300 route. miles, and it's you know comes to this. Yeah. Why don't we just make it where he gets a chunk along? I would say we could probably do that, right? So well, we can simplify instead of making it. Why don't we standardize it? Does that that make sense? To standardize it and say, so Bill, would you come back to us with your monthly, uh, you know, output per se? And then we can standardize what that reimbursement would be. That's why here you don't have to make it like that meaning, for a year. I mean, if if you know if you can come up with your what your monthly mileage is, and then what that reimbursement should be, and what's the re, what's the mileage reimbursement rate? Sixty-five cents a mile. Is it sixty-five cents a mile? Sixty-five point five. Sixty-five point five. Thank you. Um, we can do those calcs, and then we can kind of set that in stone. This way, we can standardize it versus having it bearable and have something submitted so that we can, you know, you kind of have no, this is what you're getting back every month versus 
I don't have the spreadsheet. I can give my that. They should submit their roots too, not yeah. just the money. Yeah. Is there, is there any tolls? <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> the toll road. Yeah. Yeah. The the road. Only when you go by the gremlin that lives or the troll that lives under the bridge. That's a whole different thing. Okay. Does that make sense? Or do we. How do you want to go about this? Do we. And he does do a lot. Mileage form. What's that? Mileage form. Mileage form. She'll bring a value. Thank you. Can I say something to him? Yeah, sure. Uh, when I worked here, part of my job was when there was trash issues going out during the day to investigate the trash issues. So if I think if you had a part-time person for this would cut down on, I don't know if Michael does it now, but it would cut down on the time away from the office and you would have a certain person that would show what the issues were when things were being put curbside or they were construction debris and so forth. I would take pictures so that Gina, uh, Michael's secretary, would have to write a letter to the homeowner and so forth. So if there was somebody that was designated to do this, it would cut away from either staff, public works, or you know, Michael has to go out or whatever. It was just part of my job that I would do the office and go investigate trash issues. So I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Council goes with a part-time person. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. I got, a, I got a question. This just kind of came up as she was saying that. Now, because Bill is doing that, is there any liability with us if we're paying him for the mileage and something happens while he's driving around and there's an accident? Volunteers are not going to be policy. Just want to be sure of that. That's a good point. Should I be calling my insurance company? Oh, that's good. So this, now that it's become a little bit more uh, convoluted, yeah. I think we need to, we probably need to adjudicate this further and figure out what's the right way to go about this. So um, I'd like to see, Bill, if you'd present or provide, you've already provided your tables to to our town manager, your, the amount of you know, the routes and everything. Okay, present those to the town manager. Town manager is going to present it to our town attorney, and then we'll we're going to address this in the next meeting to make sure that we get it done right. Because we do have to be aware of, you know, insurance and uh, and, and you know all the different nuances that, that go about this to make sure we do it correct. Uh, does that sound suffice to everyone here? Yeah. Nope. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for presenting that to us. It, it certainly <coughs> something else to work on. I appreciate that. Okay. All right, on to item E, award R of RFP uh, 923002, Ambulance NBFD, Company 4. We're going to table this at the request yeah, of that. Table, yes, sir, table, thank you. All right, item F, 2023-2024, uh, Lease Purchase Agreement. Anthony? Yeah. As you know, historically, every year we enter lease purchase agreements, uh, typically for Board of Ed uh, technology every year with four $70,000 annual payments. This year, we're also leasing a, a Mack truck for the Public Works Department, a three-year lease. We're also issuing for a, an ambulance at roughly $300,000. I put that out on the street to a series of vendors that I use to give me pricing, and you'll see the four results in front of you that came back, uh, ranging from 4.9, 4.6, 6.8, 7.9. I'm not sure what that guy was thinking when he put that bid together. So I look at the net overall savings and you look at the, this is an interesting year because typically all three aspects are, are one by one bidder typically. But in this case, the public works and ambulance, the second bidder, municipal leasing consultants actually came in with a better price. However, when you factor in all three components, the board of technology piece, the TD equipment finance nets out being about $1,600 cheaper when you factor all three pieces in. So a recommendation of, of staff is to go with TD Equipment Finance. Uh, they will provide the uh, documentation that I will forward over to Brian's office. And again, this is a process that's done annually, uh, just different, different projects every year. This year, again, we have three, the technology, the public works, and the ambulance. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to make a motion. Um, I'm going to move the motion as suggested in the packet rather than read the whole thing. Sorry. 
Thank you. Second. All right, motion by Councillor Angelini, second by Councillor Diamond. Do we have any discussion? I just have a question on the trucks, the truck or ambulance or whatever. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the lease, is it ours? Yes. This is just quickly a financing vehicle that we use. Okay. Yeah, it's not a lease like you lease a car and at the end you have a buyout kind of thing. This is just a, a straight financing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Financing mm -hmm. proposal that we use. Okay. Thank you. I made the motion. Okay. Did someone say? Yep, we have a yeah, second by Councilor Diamond. Okay. You had your question. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Thank you. All right, item G appropriation transfers. The first uh, pass at the year end transfers, again, there'll obviously be more as we finalize the year end numbers. The significant ones on the bottom, obviously, with the light winter that Fran had, there's some surplus money in his other construction material account, which is where the salt typically would come out of. Uh, he's proposing to move some money out to his uh, capital reserve to purchase a cabin chassis and to start a design process to looking to do an addition eventually onto that building uh, for office space. And this would fund some of the seed money to do the design work. Uh, those are the, the largest ones. Again, on the top page, you'll see some additional uh, transfers that he's looking to do with that money. Again, the, the real, the light winter really did <coughs> provide us with some opportunities to, to do some things. Uh, looking to buy a new DEF tank, a compactor, and an additional mower. Uh, the other one's the town clerk. One is very small, $1,000. And social services, again, very, very small. There'll be more on the April, on the August 1st and uh, 15th agenda for you for year-end transfers. Thank you. So I just have a question as far as the public works office study to put money into an, an account to do that when we haven't even, isn't that part of like the blueprint committee? Mm -hmm. Like why would, why would we put money into an office design if we haven't even decided what we're doing? What can I do with everything? That's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, we get, to, we get to scratch that one. I mean, it, it has never been discussed at the council here, so I was just, I didn't know what that was until you just explained it okay. when I looked at the packet. And, kind of fits with what the Blueprint Committee's doing. Right. Right. I mean, if you want to well, quite honestly, put I, it I into think there's... an account and have it as a placeholder but not spend anything because we don't know where we're going, I mean, right. that's another aspect that you could do, but... But I think, I think the Blueprint Committee, I'm thinking more holistically, putting buildings around town, you're not moving the entire public works facility somewhere else in town. No. So this would be just an addition for office space. It's, it's kind of a different, well, I see what you're saying, it's not yeah. been discussed before, but I don't think it's an apples to apples discussion. Well, well so we, do have, we do have the old police department that we haven't decided what we're doing with that yet, which would be sure. the Blueprint Committee looking at that and, you know, is that, instead of putting an addition on, would that suffice as office space for public works? I don't know. I mean, that's... Sure. You know, point. Or do we demolish it? I mean, there's a lot of discussion there, so I'm not really sure. And because we haven't discussed it at all, I'm not really sure we should be putting $35,000. Yeah. Can we just do the whole thing with the... Yeah, I think we scratched the scratch. Yeah, scratch the last one. Scratch. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Consider it scratched. Okay. Sorry, Franny. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, Franny left. You're over there. Okay. <laughs> so he watches it. He wishes he stayed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. On uh, to item H, approval well, of tax refunds. Yeah, we have to make Oh, we have to make a motion. Sorry, yes. So I make a motion Thank you. Sorry. to approve all of the transfers except for the $35,000 for PD new office design. Yes, thank you. Motion by Council Do you have a second? Second. Second by Council Fleet. I'm oh, sorry, Paul Can't get your name up today. Sorry, Nick. Uh, second by Councilor Palandino. Uh, any discussion? I'd love to do these. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? I know I keep on. She's sending back. I keep on doing more. Okay, then now on to item H, approval of tax refunds. So moved. Second. 
Okay, motion by Councilor Diamond, seconded by uh, Councilor Angeloni. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Okay, on to item 13, citizen statements and petitions. We ask it relatively brief. We have a, an executive session after, but we do appreciate your thoughts. Uh, one quick question. Um, this is kind of open-end items, maybe for the town manager. Inviting Christine Cohen and Anthony uh, and Lauren. Any thought on that still? I'd be happy to do if the council would like to invite I would just like, report. I mean, it's a war zone out there. And I'm not hearing anything from our representatives what they want to do about it. It's uh, high, uh, Hamden again, somebody was carjacked. It's, it's, we've lost control of this country and nobody wants to address it. The party in control does nothing. I'd like to hold their feet to the fire and get her down here. She stopped paper ba uh, plastic bags. Well, let's stop, put a dent in it, do something, say something. You know, her emails that come out are all fluff and no facts. Certainly something we can ask. All right. I just, uh, Mr. Potter, I, you know, being the business that I'm in, I couldn't agree with you more. I just don't know how it affects town council business and, and, and what other than to have it just be a grape session and, well, you know what I mean? Like, she, well, we want to use our time wisely here, so. I would just like her to make a statement. What does her party plan to do? They are the ones that changed the laws to cause this. And yeah, I mean, you can't, I email her, she ignores emails. Maybe you guys with a little more push could get an answer out of her. And if you can't, I apologize. I don't think you're gonna get the answer you're looking for. I don't think so either, but I mean, she's got to be made aware. Unless it's an election year, then she'll be here. And that's sad. I think they're still in session. Another open-ended item was proper training for commission members. Yeah, actually, uh, so yeah. Councillor Angeloni actually had brought in uh, some documentation that had been uh, presented previously. I think it was from, I want to say 2018 or 2017, somewhere around there, 2019. Okay. Um, and we provided it so far to all the land use boards as a refresher. Yeah. Um, we're planning on giving it to all the commissions, but we're actually redoing paper copies of it. it they're, it's a pretty thick set of well, documents. Um, we're also going to be in September with the town attorney doing a training and onboarding session for new members of boards and commissions so they can sit down and get to learn your left and right limitations, your procedures, your basics. You know, we we ran Honeywell over the coals or that, you know, there's so many, if you watched on TV or if you're not here, I mean, it's just, the public's not the enemy. They're our friends, they're our customers, they're our taxpayers. If they get to put an addition on their house, it's more tax income. But they're fought constantly and there's so much nitpicking wow. that it, it turns people off and they, walk, they give up. And we can't have that. Yeah. They are our customer and taxpayer. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Mr. Potter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Appreciate your thoughts. Okay, we're going to be moving into an executive session. Um, and right before executive session, we're going to have a quick three-minute recess to... Um, uh, I'll take a motion to move into executive session, please. So moved. Okay, motion to... Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Please second by Deputy Mayor. Mr. Mayor, the, the motion should indicate that it's for per to uh, discuss okay. matters concerning uh, security strategy uh, and or devices affecting public security and you should also note who's coming in in addition absolutely to so we're going to be including the uh town attorney uh, uh deputy chief is going to also um who else we need a town manager and town manager of course town manager of course um, i think that's it right rory oh Ro, assistant town manager i don't see him there <laughs> sorry rory i don't see you there right, there's a for those who can't see there's a column he's directly behind that column <laughs> So I forgot he was here still. All right, so, and this is the town manager. Thank you very much. All right, um, and again, in consideration to the matters concerning devices affecting public security. Uh, so we have a motion uh, by Councilor Felicia, seconded by Second. De Deputy Mayor Zampano. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stained? We are in recess and.
on to executive session. Thank you all. I gotta use